Disclaimer. It may appear that I'm giving nutritional advice in this video. That is not my intention. I simply want to address Jordan's claims. Do not take anything I say as actual nutritional advice. If you need such advice, consult a qualified licensed professional. That time again, huh? Okay. Around 400 BC, a man named Hippocrates laid the foundations of modern medicine. He believed that the human body had an innate capacity for self-healing, with the highest form of medicine to the body being everything that we put into it. Let food be thy medicine became a Hippocratic oath, which is still recited by medical doctors today. Uh, no, Jordan. While Hippocrates did say that, that's not the Hippocratic oath. Briefly summarized, the Hippocratic Oath is a pledge to uphold certain ethical standards when practicing medicine. Because both science and our understanding of ethics advance over time, the oath has been changed over the years, but the basic principle remains the same. Heal, don't harm. Pay particular attention to this part, Jordan. It means, if you don't know how to do it, don't. Instead, bring in someone who does, because you'll just cause unnecessary harm if you try it yourself. See how that relates to what you're doing? No, of course you don't. Over the course of history, our modern approach to treating illness has changed dramatically. Yes, science has advanced. Today, doctors receive little, if any, training in nutrition. Really? Well, let's see what a doctor has to say about that. The principles of nutrition are those of human biochemistry and physiology, courses required in every medical school. Although many medical schools do not teach a separate required course in nutrition, this does not mean that the subject is ignored. Many medical educators prefer that nutrition be included in other courses at the point where it's most relevant. In addition, most medical schools offer an elective course in nutrition. Stephen Barrett, MD, founder of Quackwatch, an international network devoted to exposing health-related frauds and myths and helping people avoid being deceived. Barrett continues, if your doctor is unable or unwilling to provide what you need, you can be referred to someone who will, usually a registered dietitian. Remember the Hippocratic Oath? If you can't do it yourself, then bring in someone who can. We have a system revolving around a pill for every ill, and the healthcare system fights to keep it that way. Okay, you're oversimplifying, but yes, the healthcare system wants to keep using methods that are known to be effective. It would be unethical to do otherwise. Additionally, roughly 39,000 people die due to unnecessary surgery and other hospital errors. 80,000 people die due to other infections, and 106,000 people die due to adverse drug reactions. You're not telling the whole story. You're just telling the part that makes modern medicine look bad. How many lives does it save every year? Look, I'm sure that even you agree that physical activity is good for your health, right? But I can make a case for why it should be avoided at all costs. Do you have any idea how many injuries are caused every year as a result of physical activity? Think of the children! See? When we look at all of the data under the lens of science, the correlations that we find are absolutely jaw-dropping. All the data under the lens of science? Okay, remember that. And correlation does not imply causation, by the way. In the standard American diet, the average diet looks something like this. Counting strictly by percentage of calories, 63% of our caloric intake comes from refined and processed foods. Yes, most of the energy comes from food that has lots of energy in it, and very little energy comes from food that has very little energy in it. What's your point? If you're trying to say that this is bad, then you need to actually explain what this graphic should look like, otherwise it's meaningless. Now, we've been reading and seeing information like this for a long time. A long time. And thanks to the internet, news sources, and more and more documentaries on the topic, the information is just now starting to really reach people. So you want to look at all the data through the lens of science, and you get your information from documentaries, the news, and the internet? Basically, it sounds like what you're trying to do is look at everything except the data that comes from actual scientific research. Published in 1981, the Cancer Atlas was the result of Zhou's initiated study. It shows a highly unusual distribution of different types of cancer in China, which tended to be clustered in certain hotspots. 
The results of this study demonstrated that the causes of all of these clusters of cancer had to be related to the environment, and in the researchers' professional opinions, related heavily to diet. When Dr. Campbell learned about the Cancer Atlas, it became what he described as the capstone of his research and took him down a road of discovery which would ultimately become published in a book called The China Study. Not a peer-reviewed article? Okay, red flag. Dr. Campbell teamed up with Chinese and British researchers who went into 65 counties in rural China, finding out what 6,500 people ate and how they lived. In 1990, The China Study was published, which identified over 94,000 correlations between diet and disease. Yeah, correlations. The study was a very clear indication of some very powerful revelations. The moment that animal products were introduced into the diet, blood cholesterol levels went up, cancer started to appear, and disease started to make its way into the communities. And were other variables accounted for? How else did their lives change? How was their life expectancy affected? Because the longer you live, good thing, the more likely you are to get cancer, bad thing. Again, red flag. It sounds to me like this Campbell fellow just wants to scare people into not eating meat. This couldn't have anything to do with him being on the advisory board of PCRM, could it? PCRM, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, is listed by Quackwatch.org as a questionable organization. According to Quackwatch, the National Council Against Health Fraud, and the American Medical Association, PCRM is an animal rights group that poorly hides its true purpose behind the claim that they promote optimal diet for prevention of disease. Its founder and president, Neil Barnard, MD, is also medical advisor to the radical animal rights group PETA. That's right, the guys who condone acts of terrorism in the name of animal liberation. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that this proves that Campbell is wrong. That would be a guilt by association fallacy. But it certainly does make me question his honesty, or at least his objectivity. What do other experts say? Do they agree with his findings? Well, no. Neither the American Office of Health Promotion and Disease Prevention nor the Swedish National Food Agency explicitly recommend a vegetarian, much less vegan, diet. Their recommendations are based on peer-reviewed systematic reviews of the entire field of nutritional science. In other words, they did what you claim to be doing. They looked at all the data under the lens of science. Both groups recommend balanced, varied diets, and that meat should be consumed in moderation. The problem isn't that people eat meat. The problem is that people eat too much meat, and that leads to a number of health problems. Not eating meat per se, but eating too much meat. Diabetes, for example, of which 30 million people in the US are reported to struggle with, has been demonstrated to be outright cured with a plant-based diet. That's not what the article depicted here says. All it says is that 35% of patients in the vegan diet group reduced the dosage of their medication compared to 20% in the control group. Okay, that's great. I mean, it's an improvement. It's a treatment that appears to have a significant positive effect, but to call it a cure is just plain dishonest. Just one other slight problem, though. Neil Barnard of PCRM. You should probably look for independent confirmation. And the funny thing is, it's actually illegal in most countries to treat cancer with nutrition therapy. There have been many physicians now speaking out about this at conferences saying that they're only allowed to treat cancer with chemo, surgery, or radiation. Yeah, I certainly hope so. I mean, those methods work. Wouldn't it be highly unethical to use methods that don't work or haven't been shown to work when you have methods at your disposal that you know are very effective. Tell me, Jordan, if you were hanging off the edge of a cliff and I was the only one around who could help you, wouldn't you get pretty pissed if I used the think happy thoughts method instead of the grab you and pull you up method? If an animal has been suffering and abused its entire life, when you eat it, all of that adrenaline, that fear and that suffering now enters into your body and adds that trauma into your body of consciousness. Lose the woo, Jordan. But while we're on this subject, I feel the need to point out that I absolutely do not condone treating animals in this manner. Now, I eat meat, so obviously I condone killing animals for food, but I don't condone killing them for sport or entertainment or anything like that. Nor do I condone killing them in slow and painful ways to become food. 
and I definitely don't condone mistreating them while they're alive. Fortunately, I live in a country where the laws regarding animal treatment are very strict, and I will always be willing to pay a little extra for Swedish meat. Processed meats include your sausages like pepperoni and other common products like hot dogs. It's worth mentioning off the bat that the World Health Organization and the International Agency for Research on Cancer, among other scientific institutions, have officially classified processed meat as a carcinogen, which means it is confirmed to cause cancer. Yeah, just like sunlight. According to a meta-analysis by Chan et al. in 2011, the risk of getting colorectal cancer increases by about 18% for every 50 grams per day increase of processed meat intake. That may sound bad, but according to Howlander et al., 5% of all Americans who already eat too much processed meat will be diagnosed with this disease during their lifetime, half of them after the age of 69. According to Chan's study, those who ate the most processed meat had a 22% greater chance of getting cancer than those who ate the least. A 22% increase of 5% gives a risk of 6.1%. Yes, that's an increase, but not one you need to lose any sleep over. Is milk and dairy in general really all that good for us? Yes, but I'm sure you've found some questionable sources who will say otherwise. The mothers will often also be injected with a hormonal additive called BST, or bovine somatropin, also called recombinant bovine growth hormone, which shortens to RGBH, which reports to increase milk production by 10%, but also has received criticism from scientists, farmers, and consumers due to making the cows sick. Which is why it's illegal in nations that actually give a shit about animals. Finally, before being packaged and brought to the supermarkets, milk is pasteurized, which means heated to about 65 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. This is done to destroy potentially dangerous germs and prevents the souring of the milk to make it last longer. And it makes it much safer to drink. I certainly wouldn't want to drink milk with E. coli in it. However, in the process, it also destroys all of the beneficial bacteria and destroys the nutritious constituents within the milk. No, it very slightly reduces them. The milk actually has the nutritional value it says on the pack. Dr. Joseph Markola is listed by Quackwatch and has been ordered repeatedly by the FDA to stop making false claims. He is most definitely not to be regarded as a reliable source of scientific information. But the truth seems stranger than fiction. New research and investigation by many prominent nutritionists, doctors, and physicians have strongly linked dairy to causing eczema, arthritis, osteoporosis, prostate cancer, breast cancer, asthma, and acne, as well as heart disease, anemia, and increased allergies. Okay, one of the doctors you showed is Neil Barnard. Remember him? Another is Colin Campbell. Yep, the PCRM guys. I have a sneaking suspicion that the others are associated with PCRM as well, and that this is why they appeared in the documentary you took this from. A source cited for several of your claims, namely arthritis, osteoporosis, prostate cancer, heart disease, anemia, and allergies, is NutritionMD, a website operated by, can you guess, PCRM. Of course! Jordan, I'm done with this. You said you were going to look at all the data through the lens of science, but what you've done is look at all the data that says what you like through the lens of a religiously motivated vegan. You want it to be unhealthy to eat animal products. And if it isn't unhealthy, or isn't unhealthy enough to scare people into joining your religion, then it's okay to lie for the vegetable, just like Christians can lie for Jesus. Look, if you don't want to eat meat for whatever reason, that's fine. I don't care. It's none of my business. I respect your choice. But I can't stand vegans of the religious variety who feel the need to be dishonest assholes about it. But anyway, Jordan, here's something I really want to understand. According to you, eating animal products make you sick. But in the first ever episode of Spirit Science, you said this. Illness is also a creation of yours. If you have a low immune system, it's because of you. Typically, we like to blame things on the virus going around or our own immune systems, but the way that we become susceptible to them is from inside, whether that there's some ongoing negative energy or some bad feeling that we allow into ourselves. Now, I assume you're not gonna come out and say that you were wrong then, or that you're wrong now, so let me just ask, 
Don't you ever get tired of contradicting yourself?